Thank you very much. Dear Principal of SBA Gymnasium, Henrik Boberg Bick, dear Speaker of the Danish Parliament, Mons Lykketoft, dear Executive Staff of Egmont, dear President of the General Assembly, Esther Lang Lydia, and beloved participants of Esbjerg Gymnasium's Model United Nations 2013. The topic of this year's conference is science and peace. This week is internationally recognized as the official UN Science and Peace Week. And even though it might seem like a stretch, it is not. Science shares deep and profound properties as the ones of international organization. Both of them are experimental. Led by countless of unsuccessful trials and errors, striving towards results. While science seek the universal truth, international organizations seek the universal language, the universal dialogue. Both science and peace are products of reason. Both science and peace are products of reason gazing towards the forces working against reason. This struggle between reason and unreason will stop at the point where the relation between science and peace is fulfilled. 68 years ago, um, the advances within theoretical physics led to the creation of the most devastating weapon man has ever seen. 68 years ago, science showed itself for the first time to be a threat towards the peace. Since then, we have moved into a new century. We have moved into a new millennium. The world has changed. Tomorrow's conflict is dominated by social medias, drones, and cyber warfare. Tomorrow's conflict is not much different from the one of today, but it is certainly different from the one five years ago, and most certainly different from the one 68 years ago. In the aftermath of this fatal typhoon in Southeast Asia, we also become aware of the amazing potential in modern day science. Clean water system have the potential of providing millions and millions of people with clean drinking water. This proved to us that, that today's science is not as much a problem as it used to be. It is more a solution. Unlike 68 years ago, we do not define science as a threat towards the peace. We define science as a path to peace. We have to deal with the consequences of science, good and bad. The world is changing faster than ever before. New technologies and opportunities rise and fall at a tremendous speed. But if this change can be grasped, and used to make progressive and sustainable development based on science, reason, and peace, then this generation might very well become the one generation who truly made a difference. Then we might become the one generation who turns unreason into reason, who turns science into peace. And I'll yield the floor back to the President of the General Assembly. Thank you for the word.